Um, now, this conference is about gods and politics and, and so what is religion like in, in our lives, our real lives right now. And I think it's interesting to look at if we say, okay, religion is probably a cognitive parasite. Um, how is this parasite mutating and adapting to new environment? Because it's clear, and we've known that forever and ever, that religion does mutate. It does morph into other forms. Um, so what is happening now? And I think it's especially interesting to see what is happening in the Western world, because that's where I live. And we can all see that in other parts of the world, we have um, fundamentalism is um, on the rise. So what is actually happening here? And I think um, what we're seeing in, in all of the Western world, probably you could say the United States is a little bit of an aberration because they have so many fundamentalists. Um, but still, I would say that an overall trend in the Western world is that religion is mutating or morphing into something that's a lot more fuzzy. We are going, we are going away from fundamentalism and we're going into this reality where religion is more a question of, it's something the individual can use. It's almost, it's like wellness, it's like psychology, it's like self-help. Um, because if you think about it, for the last, say, five years, we have seen study after study coming out of reputable places like Harvard and Duke University about how good religion is for your health. I mean, it, it was, you can cite studies that will tell you that, you know, have a, a religious belief and you will have a lower blood pressure or, you know, less lipid in your blood system or, you know, um, lower risk of heart attack, whatever it is. And all these studies of, you know, you live longer if you believe in something uh, and you, of course, you are happier. The latest uh, installment in this uh, row of studies came out last month from Harold Koenig, who's uh, at Duke University, where there's actually a center for spirituality, theology, and health. Because this, uh, this whole area of studying the effects of um, religion on health is really um, demanding a lot of money, demanding a lot of attention uh, these days. And anyway, so uh, Harold Koenig sat down and meta-analyzed 2,500 different studies and came to the result that yes, there is actually something about it. You live longer with a religious belief. You have you know, lower risk of uh, serious disease like heart attack and, and um, cardiovascular disease. And you are definitely happier. Usually, people will try to say, well, maybe it's because you know, religious people drink less, they smoke less, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but Harold Koenig uh, came out with the um, statement that maybe it is simply religion in itself that has something. Maybe we, we, can, we can discard these theories about uh, the healthier living. It's that religion in itself has something that makes people happier and live longer. And of course, the sort of the bottom line of all these studies is that religion actually makes you a good person. Because what is it that we value in, in, in our society? It is being healthy, being happy, living longer. I mean, in this country, we have a government that actually has as a goal that the, um, the mean age of living in Denmark should be increased by three years over the next 10 years. It's, it's a political goal that we should live longer. And in other countries, they have a political goal that we should be happier. And so, what this whole thing says is really that you are a good person if you believe in something. And another interesting trend, I think, is the, um, you, um, recently the EU value survey came out with um, a survey of, of all the European countries where it seems that um, religion is, again, it's, it's moving away from belonging to, you, you don't belong to a denomination anymore so much. You make up your own religion, kind of. It's, it's that whole wellness thing again. And they call it uh, fussy fidelity. You can, you know, it's an individual interpretation. You can basically believe in anything 
Um, and you have Christians who also believe in reincarnation and you know, are very fond of the Dalai Lama, for example. We have in this country uh, actually had discussions of, is it okay for clergy uh, in the uh, state Lutheran church to also believe in reincarnation? And apparently, this fussy fidelity works for about 40% of Western Europeans. So again, we have this, you know, it's not fundamentalism anymore. It's not that you believe what it says in the Bible or whatever book you believe in. It's that you can make up your own religion. And of course, it's, it's, it's a good thing, right? Because it makes you live longer and be happier. And just to look at the Danes, um, we always sort of pride ourselves that we're a very secular society. And a couple of years ago, um, Phil Zuckerman, a um, sociologist from the US, came over and studied Denmark and studied Sweden for about a year and wrote this book, Society Without God. Because uh, what he found, of course, is that when he went out and spoke to people about their belief, we don't, in this country or in Sweden, believe in the way the Americans believe. We don't believe in that Christian God who is you know, an, uh, an avenger and who's a, an old guy with a beard, whatever. We create our own sort of whatever it is we believe in. Um, and of course, our churches are empty. We know that. But is it that we're really godless? Um, and of course, Zuckerman would say that we are godless when we compare to Americans, because we can't exactly point to what is the God we believe in. And if you survey the Danish people, still about 50% will say that they believe in something. It's not exactly the Christian God, but there is something out there, right? Um, and actually, Zuckerman called it somethingism. And it might, it might be the spaghetti monster. It might be anything. Uh, usually, when you ask people, they will completely, it, it defies you know, uh, definition. It's like, I believe there is something greater out there, something that's you know, either controlling us or just you know, it's, that created us, whatever. It's something, which for me is completely weird. But that, again, it just, it makes sense if you look at religion as a cognitive parasite. It's not that, I mean, in the Western world, of course, religion is under selective pressure right now. It's under pressure from science. You can't, as a logical being, believe in the Christian God of the Bible. So, but you know, you have this idea that there must be something. So, you know, you make up your own religion. And another trend, if you look around, is that people will say that they're not religious, but they are spiritual whatever that means. I've never gotten a good definition of spirituality from anyone. But it, it clearly, for me, it, it, it smells like religion. Uh, it's, it's that people, again, they will sort of have this feeling that if you're a spiritual person, you know, there is something out there. You are not just interested in, in the material world. And again, it makes you sort of a deeper person, right? A better person, in a way. And of course, you will live longer and be happier and whatever. And spirituality is also the form that you see religion take when it comes into uh, the corporate world. Because you can go out there and look at sociologists who are um, studying religion, how it's really, it, it's coming into the corporate world in weird fashions. Um, more and more corporations have almost their own religion or kind of there is a religious feeling about being you know part of google or part of something else like that and leaders will or managers will go and take courses in you know uh, buddhism and whatever and they will sample these you know things they can use from different religion again it's a it's that fussy fidelity you can create a sort of belief or value system um, and again, I think this with the, the thing with the value system is, is really important because I think that what we're seeing, oh, back. Um, the value system is important because it seems like, again, religion is where a lot of people think they should get values from. And they will say again and again, you can't get values from science. Science doesn't, science doesn't tell you what is right and what is wrong. So you need some kind of 
spiritual advice or religion to say what's right and wrong. Of course, you don't. If you look at, for example, how good people are at uh, distinguishing right from wrong, if you, for example, take a look at the US, you have tons of studies that will show you that in the Bible Belt, things like teenage pregnancies, uh, rapes, murders, violent crimes are a lot more common than they are in the states that are not so um, full of believers and certainly not so fundamentalist. So it's not that I think we can safely say it's not that morality grows out of religion. Anyway, so we have this cognitive parasite that is mutating, it's becoming a wellness thing, a psychology thing, a, a spiritual indefinable thing. So does that make it um, a better, kinder, gentler parasite? It might, you might say that, well, can anyone have anything against you know, having some kind of personal belief that makes you happier, whatever. Um, I think there, it, it, it may be, I don't think you can call it a, a kind of gentler parasite. I think it's, it's been, it's more like it's a parasite that's been on pressure and it's, it's sort of gone into stealth mode. It doesn't really look like religion anymore. So all the people who are speaking up against religion in, um, in society and in daily life, well, sort of, it, it's, it seems like they don't have anything to fight against anymore because it's, um, the parasite has gone into stealth mode. 